All right, so we're going to take a look at 7-4, where we have some special right triangles. And you'll see we have a square here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write that, you know, each side of the square is 1. And we've got right angles all the way around. Now, I could use a, num a number other than 1, but I'm going to go ahead and use 1. Um, but if I draw a diagonal, a diagonal goes from one vertex to a non-consecutive vertex. Um, we have, if I look up here just at the top, I've got an isosceles triangle. That's a right angle. One, one, since it's isosceles, we know these base angles are congruent, so this angle is congruent to that. Therefore, they each have to be 45 degrees. And if I do Pythagorean theorem on this problem to figure out what this hypotenuse is, um, I would get 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to c squared. 1 plus 1, or 1 squared is 1. 1 squared is 1. So I get 2 equals c squared, so square root both sides. And I see that the hypotenuse is the square root of 2. Um, now on the right triangle, since it's isosceles, we don't, both legs are equal to each other. So I'm going to call this one a leg up here. Call this a leg over here. And then we have our hypotenuse here. What I'm going to do, and this is true of every 45, 45, 90 triangle. That's what we call this, 45, 45, 90, because of the angles. Um, that if I were to tell you the leg to leg ratio is 1 to 1, because they're the same. The leg to hypotenuse ratio is, well, our leg, we, we called it 1. And the reason I called it 1 before is so I could just make this ratio. And the hypotenuse is square root of 2. So it's a 1 to square root of 2 ratio. So let's look down at this next example and figure out how we can apply this. So 8 is a leg. They're asking for us to find the hypotenuse. So what I am doing here, in essence, is I'm looking at the leg the hypotenuse ratio. Well, my leg is 8. My hypotenuse, I don't know, you can call it x if you'd like. And it's equal to my leg to hypotenuse ratio. Well, what is my leg to hypotenuse ratio? It shows it up above. It's 1 to square root of 2. So I'm going to come back over here and go 1 to square root of 2 because it's a leg to hypotenuse. Now I can do my cross product. 1 times x is x equals my other cross product, 8 times square root of 2. 8 squared of 2 is the hypotenuse of this problem. Let's do the same thing over here on B. So once again, I'm going to look at leg to hypotenuse. Leg to hypotenuse is 1 to square root of 2. So my leg, each leg is the same, doesn't really matter which one. My leg is 3 square roots of 2. My hypotenuse, maybe I'll call it x. I called it x in the last one. Now I do my cross products. 1 times x is x equals 3 square root of 2 times square root of 2. Well, square root of 2 times square root of 2, since they're both square roots, they multiply together. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 would be square root of 4. And the square root of 4 simplifies to 2. And I already had a 3 out front, so I really end up with 3 times 2, which is 6. So the answer to this problem is 6. Now, you may, as you do more and more of these, you may start to notice that kind of be able to use that pattern to get your answers a little bit more quickly. And I, that would be great. That'd be fantastic. Um, let's look at this one. Here we have the hypotenuse. And we're looking for the leg being x. The hypotenuse is 1 to square root of 2. Cross multiplication. Cross product 1 times 5 square root of 2 is 5 square root of 2. Equals over here. You can solve for x, I just want to divide away the square root of 2. So I have to divide over here, and it comes to my potential for that square root of 2. So we got x by itself now, and it's equal to 5. So that's how we can uh, use uh, 45, 45, 90 ratios to solve those triangles. And we don't have to do Pythagorean theorem. Okay, next we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Or sorry, we'll get to 30. I'm going to start with a um, a regular triangle. Let me call the legs 2 this time. And so these would be 60 degree angles. But what I want to do is draw an altitude or a height in. So go from there. That creates a right angle. 
Now, at the top here where I had a 60, it now got cut in half because it was isosceles and it now two cuts in half. So that's actually a 30. Both of them are 30s. Now, an I, since it's an, uh, a regular triangle is isosceles, it, this altitude cuts the bottom in half. So I had a 2 in total, but now this is a 1 over there, and this is a 1 over here. So I can break it apart. Now what I'm going to do is redraw just one of those right triangles. We call it a 30, 60, 90 triangle because we've got a 30 degree angle. We've got a 60 degree angle, and we've got a 90 degree angle. So the hypotenuse of this was 2. This leg that's on the bottom I have is one. And then I got a leg over here that I'm going to try to find the side of it. Now I have two different legs, but they're not the same leg. It's different than a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So I want to name these two differently. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call this one at the bottom the short leg. And for an abbreviation, I'll just use SL. Over here, I've got a long leg. And so for an abbreviation, I will use LL. And the note you should notice the 30 degree angle and the short leg are always opposite of each other. And then the 60 and the long leg are always opposite of each other. 30 is smaller than 60, so that is the smallest side. Okay, so let's do Pythagorean theorem. And, and in the future, we won't do Pythagorean theorem on this problem, but to figure out what this long leg is, um, I'll say I've got a squared plus one squared equals my hypotenuse squared, two squared. Subtract our one square root. A is square root of three. That's our long leg. So because we know all three of those, now I can talk about my ring theory. So I've got the short leg, the long leg, and hypotenuse over here. So I've got the long leg, the short leg, and the long leg over here. The long leg is square root of three, and the hypotenuse is square root of three. Of note here, the short leg, the hypotenuse is a one to two raised to the two. So that means the hypotenuse is five to one is the short leg. That's how it's known. Let's go ahead and try to solve this triangle down here. I know one of the, okay, here's my 30. 30 is opposite the short leg. So short leg is x. And then 9 is opposite the 60. That's my long leg. And y is my hypotenuse. Oops. Okay. Um, so when I set up this ratio, I don't really want three things at the time like I have here. Because I can only cross, cross products with two at a time. So we're going to pick two of the three to use. So we can choose which of these three things I want to use. Well, clearly I'm going to use the long leg, because I already know that one. And then I can choose whether to find short leg or half leg first. I want to go with short leg first. So I'm looking at the short leg or the long leg. So in my problem, my short leg is x, my long leg is 9. Well, if I look up above, my short leg, my ratio is above, but my ratio is I have a hard time erasing this. Okay. Uh, maybe I won't get it. I'll just look at this. The short leg was one. I'll turn it into a one. Uh, my long leg was still a three, so let's replace the bottom. That's square root of three. And so those are equal to each other. That was once again, I'll decide if I want to make notes. I want to remember what I was actually using here, which was the long leg. Cross products, x times square root of 3 is square root of 3 times x equals 1 times 9, which is 9. Here I'm going to divide by my square root of 3. So 9 squared 3, I have to rationalize that. So I can multiply the top and the bottom both by the square root of 3. So on the top, I have 9 squared root of 3. And the denominator, square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is 9, which turns into just 3. And then my 9 and my 3. Giving me my answer, 3 squared of 3 over 1, so it's just 3 squared of 3. I still have to find y, but that's my x. So now my hypotenuse, I'll do a short leg to hypotenuse ratio, that's a 1 to 2 ratio. 1 to 2, here it's equal to, I just found a short leg, over your hypotenuse, which is y, cross the product, y is equal to 2. Times 3 squared of 3, which is actually a 6. So I get 6 square root of 3. So you can use those ratios to find all of uh, those sides of a 30, 60, and 90 also.